all five of these smartphones have released within the past few weeks, the latest being the Oppo Find X3 Pro and Asus ROG Phone 5. Asus have finally increased charging to 65 watts, and yes, that block is included within the box, which allows for very fast charging thanks to its dual battery design, which adds up to 6,000 milliamp hours, which in turn allows the phone to be treated as a foldable device. Wink, wink. Oppo have stuck to their wonderful 65 watt SuperVOOC 2.0 charging and we get an increased 4500 milliamp hour cell. The Realme GT has the same size block as well as the same size battery as the Oppo Find X3 Pro and the Redmi K40 Pro has the same wattage as its predecessor at 33 watts. Also in the box with a 4520 milliamp hour cell and the Redmi Note 10 Pro with a 5020 milliamp hour cell and 33 watt charging matching the K40 Pro. I'm extremely excited to get things going. This is Technic and Without further ado, let's go. Before plugging in the devices, it's worth testing out the temperature at the start of the test. Remember, all these phones have been off for a while, so this is pretty much just room temperature. At each interval, I'll test out the degrees Celsius once more to see which one is staying the coolest and which one is staying the hottest throughout this charging process. Just to let you know, I have disabled all forms of battery optimizations, which do slow down phones. We want to get it as fast as possible over here. After the first 10 minute interval, we have 5% on the ROG phone, which is really strange. 40% on the Find X3 Pro, 37 on the Realme, 24 on the Redmi K40 Pro and 16% on the Note 10 Pro, even though they both have the same wattage block, but we have a slightly bigger battery on the Note 10 Pro. After 15 minutes, 17% on the ROG Phone 3 starting to catch up a bit, but 60% on the Find X3 Pro with the same size charging block as the ROG Phone is crazy, but remember it does have a significantly smaller battery. After 20 minutes, we have 30% on the ROG, 77% on the Oppo, 72% on the Realme, 47% on the K40 Pro, and 35% on the Note 10 Pro. The K40 Pro doing a lot better than the Note 10 Pro, even though there's only a 500 milliamp hour difference between those two devices. After 25 minutes, we have 92% on the Oppo Find X3 Pro, 42% on the ROG phone. The coolest phone at the interval is the Oppo. The coolest peak is the ROG and the hottest so far throughout the test is the Note 10 Pro. After just 29 minutes, the Oppo Find X3 Pro decides to say, guys, I've reached that finish line. Zero to 100% in 29 minutes is absolutely phenomenal since its predecessor, the Oppo Find X2 Pro with a smaller battery and the same size charging block did it in 31 minutes. So definitely an improvement over here with a milliamp hour permanent reading of 155.2 and got to 50% in just 12 minutes, which is fantastic. After 30 minutes, we have 55% on the ROG Phone 3, same as the Note 10 Pro. And after 37 minutes, the Realme GT clocks out, which is pretty impressive, but it has the same wattage block as the Oppo and the same size battery. Can't believe it took eight minutes longer to do it, but nevertheless, still great charging time. But its predecessor, the Realme X50 Pro, did it in 31 minutes, so not much of an improvement this time around. After 45 minutes, we have 85% on the ROG Phone 3 now finally catching up and surpassing the Note 10 Pro. 96% on the K40 Pro, which is now done at 51 minutes. 33 watt charging, 51 minutes is fantastic with a 4,520 milliamp hour battery. Its predecessor, the K30 Pro Zoom Edition with a 4,700 milliamp hour battery did it in one hour and eight minutes. So certainly an improvement over here. And after one hour, we have 95% on the ROG Phone 5 and 93% on the Note 10 Pro. Which one is gonna take the cake? You would expect it to be the ROG Phone since it has 65 watt charging. But remember, it does have a much larger battery than the Note 10 Pro over here. The Note 10 Pro has the lowest wattage charging block, but it has been the hottest throughout the test. After one hour and four minutes, that little green LED on the ROG phone popped up. I didn't notice it while I was standing there, but it reached 100% in one hour and four minutes, which is great considering the ROG phone three did it in an hour and 34 minutes. So that 65 watt charging is superb. Hour and 13 minutes, not long after the ROG phone though, the Note 10 Pro clocks out zero to 100% in one hour and 13 minutes. Fifth place over here, we have the Redmi Note 10 Pro with one hour and 13 minutes, 33 watt charging and 5,020 milliamp hour battery. Absolutely superb for a phone that is almost half the price as the most expensive one here. The Asus ROG Phone 5 with one hour and four minutes places fourth year, 65 watt charging, which is actually capped at 60 watts and a 6,000 milliamp hour dual cell battery. The Redmi K40 Pro 51 minutes, 33 watt charging, 4,520 milliamp hour battery, did a great job placing a third. Second place, we have the Realme GT, also a dual cell battery over here, 4,500 milliamp hours in total with 65 watt charging, doing it in 37 minutes, which is impressive 
impressive to say the least. First place here, king of the channel so far. In terms of 65 watt charging and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, 29 minutes, which is absolutely fantastic. Once again, a dual battery system within the Oppo. When it comes to milliamp hour per minute readings, the best was of course the Oppo with 155.2 and the worst would be in the Note 10 Pro here with 68.8. In terms of the first 50% of charge, which is what a lot of people charge their phone to when they're in a hurry, the Oppo did it in just 12 minutes. The Realme in 13, not far behind that. In 21 minutes on the K40 Pro, 27 minutes on both the ROG phone and the Note 10 Pro, which is when the ROG phone decided to surpass the Note 10 Pro. Stay tuned for more videos on these five devices in the weeks to come. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you have yet to do so. This is Technic, and I'll catch you in the next one.